Well, all right. <clears throat> what do we got today? Well, uh, well, let me get these guys out of here. They're uh, a little scared, actually. They're not used to sitting on top of synthetic stones. And um, that's what this video is about. These synthetic stones. That's right. These are all 8K or 8,000 grit whetstones. They're all synthetics, all different brands. Some brands have multiple entries, you know, but um, they're not all from the same brand. And, all right, so <clears throat> I guess normal question would be like, you know, why did I put this project together? You know, uh, there are a number of ideas behind this video, actually. Uh, I try to touch base on the most important reasons now before I roll into it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, you know, the different stones. I'm not going to do like, you know, honing tests on camera and I'm not going to show you like fancy high magnification uh, images off of uh, my uh, big microscope because that's not what this video is about. All right, this video is just about me working with these stones and what I found uh, to be true about these stones. You know, I want to give uh, new guys getting in a glimpse of the different assets and liabilities across a variety of brands and the different series of stones in some of those brands. You know, when I started honing, uh, the info that was being shared in the forums didn't always ring true. It didn't seem to be uh, on point. There a lot of vague commentary. Um, you know, there was the... Uh, you know, but I keep going back to it, and I know it pisses people off, but um, I don't really care. You know, people, uh, when I came around, were saying uh, the uh, Norton 8K is uh, the best thing in the world, and I uh, can never open this box, man. It's like the biggest pain in the butt. Um, here you go, the Norton combo. They said, this is all you need. Um, that that wasn't true, you know. Um, and then when I would say that it isn't true, they, they get their panties in a bunch, and uh, you either wind up blocked or kicked out of forums or, you know, shunned because, you know, how dare you <coughs> contradict the cognoscenti because they've done tests. And only their tests matter. Okay, which is like a load of bullshit. Anyway, another reason I'm doing this is to uh, confirm some of what I knew about the stones already. Like this, right, Naniwa. Um, this used to be called Super Stone. Now it's called uh, Sharpening Stone. This was like my second set of stones was the Super Stones. And like, you know, I, I had used them and tested and compared them. And I wanted to give myself the chance to touch base with the things I knew. Disprove some of them, maybe, because that's part of the scientific process. That's something like you don't hear about. But a uh, scientific process includes um, <clears throat> having a hypothesis that you can try to disprove and then you try to disprove it. So I wanted to like go through that, and I uh, wanted to do side by sides with things that you know I didn't have back then, like you know these new, newer Shaptons, you know, um, next to like this stone, and you know just go back and forth and uh, write notes. I wrote a ton of notes. Okay, I, I just as I was doing this, there was like a, a constant stream of note taking, and um, I kept referring to it, and then I blocked it all out so I can sort of relate it here, you know. Uh, to everybody um, in, in a fairly simple format. So it might be a little boring for some people because there isn't going to be any swarf. Uh, I'll probably put a stone down. Yeah, I'll do that. And then like I'll talk about some of the assets, but it's not going to be like head to head, toe to toe type of thing. That's not going to happen. All right. All right. So um, another thing that um, this test allowed me to do was like, you know, like the Sigma Power 8000, these weren't readily available or too well known back then. So uh, back when, like, I was starting to buy my, you know, stones and get serious, and I wanted to compare it to, again, stones that I knew, you know, and then stones that I'm constantly using now. So <clears throat> I guess partly this video is about helping you guys learn a little bit about stones that you might not <clears throat> hear too much about or you might not hear about them in a way that's like, you know, verifiable or qualitative or quantitative, you know, and so th my findings might be helpful. I'm going to try and share them the way I wish people would have been telling me back when I started, you know, I just, I, I've never undertaken a project like this, so I don't know. Anyway, this time I sell this, I use this, uh, you'll see in my findings, it's not on top of the pile, but um, it is a good stone and I do love it. 
and the reason I use it and the reason I do sell them is is because I believe in them okay I um, I moved to these stones from Chosera's because I think they're a better value and they are not known to craze and crack where the Chosera's were like spider webbing all over town and people's 5k's were splitting and people were having to glue them down to boards and stuff so to me that's a problematic scenario and uh, you know the takeaway you know uh, I'm going to discuss and show what I think are the major discerning assets and liabilities of each of these stones you know I've been working on this project uh, with these 10 AKs for literally over a year. Probably be good if I just gave you a brief sort of visual list of the stones the AKs involved in this uh, lovely project all right so stones I chose um, in no particular order they just happen to be you know hanging out over here so um, we have uh, Shapton glass stones right um, I have uh, two there there are two different 8,000 grit Shapton glass stones one is HC one is HR um, the boxes look similar there's no call out but the serial numbers are the you know whatever model numbers are different and uh, I'll get into the whys and wherefores of that in a while. All right. I have uh, also uh, brought into this project the um, Naniwa Fuji. And uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, newer stone from Naniwa. Okay. So it's uh, 8,000 there. And a, uh, here's the uh, Snow White Junpaku, uh 8,000 grit. Uh, it's been around for a while. Um, Magnesia Bond Stone. That's another one there. Uh, you already saw me, I think, uh, pull this, uh, move this around. This is the uh, Norton uh, Combo. Uh, one side is 4,000, one side is 8,000. This is a USA 8,000 uh, grit stone. Uh, this is not one of the current iterations where I, I, I don't know where they made now. Mexico, Italy, something. There's some kind of crazy stuff. This is an older version. Um, I had one originally when I started honing and I sold it because, well, I really don't like it. It works. I just don't like it. Anyway, uh, for the test last year, uh, I located somebody who had an old one that he bought like, you know, a long while ago and uh, he was willing to sell it to me. So I, when I got it, it was like completely crudded up. Um, so I uh, lapped it clean myself. Um, so it would be a little presentable and I could have faith that the surface was uh, true and consistent and and it is anyway so there's that I'll put that over there then there's the uh, sharpening stone from Naniwa um, also previously known as a super stone you know very popular very well known um, Sigma power 8000 nice presentation you know uh, looks like a magnesia bond or something but I'm not convinced it is a magnesia bond um, nice pretty metallic silver box <laughs> if that means anything I don't know uh, so that's in there and this was exciting for me it took me like forever to get this uh, they're not as easy to get as one might think uh, they were out of stock everywhere and I actually had somebody do me a major favor and locate one and it just took him time to get to it and then send it to me but I did put good time in on it all right so I'm gonna cover that one also obviously because it's here on the bench and uh okay uh stone you don't hear about too much in uh, razor circles that's the uh king you know i think they call it a g1 yeah it's g1 right there um 8k um this is uh an older series um the, the king water stones were very early on uh, with synthetic stones of the modern age, okay, and uh, they were real game changers back when they came out, and this is the AK in that series, and uh, then there's this one, right, um, <coughs> the um, Kitayama, all right, uh, this is the Kitayama AK 8000, uh, they don't come like this, I put cashew on the back of this to protect this uh, stampage, and um, Man, this was like 15 coats, maybe more, uh, to get that done. But um, anyway, so there you have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, yes, the last one. I forgot. The um, Shapton Pro or the Kuramaku. This is the Japanese um, non-export version. I tested these against the US versions and they're identical. Anyway, um, 
here you go 10 stones that's it and now we're going to jump into the process all right so um the process what was my testing regimen how did i you know um work with the stones to determine you know the hierarchy of you know which one's better or whatever for me um so i stuck to two razors all right um that limited uh, a lot of variables i uh two different grinds two different types of steel very markedly different one is a greaves one's a gold doll all right uh the greaves i'm not going to get into too much here because uh it's in another video that i'm working on so i'm going to move that out um this is uh the gold dollar and so um i stuck with them and i did my best to do all of my honing cycles exactly the same way all right so um all of my stones every time i hone uh, i didn't bring it out but i have a starrett straight edge it's you know whatever 0 0.001 percent perfectly true or something it's got a really good um rep and i use that to check for flatness uh, when i'm lapping so throughout everything i constantly checked all of my stones to make sure they were true all right um when i needed to flatten i would flatten them with the atoma for uh 140 um 400 x plates that i use and then i would dress the surfaces down with 400 x wet dry paper to remove any uh, uh anomalous scratches and and distractions on the surface so everything was like cool now i normally don't do that when i'm honing every day but for the purpose of this uh you know this test this project i wanted everything to be like very consistent so i always use the same wet dry i always use the same atomas i always use the same razors and the same hunts and basically my baseline edge right uh was established on both razors with my uh shapton pros um the 1.5k and then uh the 5k all right and um in order for you for each cycle what I would do is I would drag I don't even know if there's any marks left because I had to lap everything and, and redo it I think this is the edge you, pro you probably can't see it really but th there are some marks in here I, I would drag the edge in through here you know and people say you know kill it on glass you don't need to kill edges on glass and I didn't really need to kill it on the stone I did it for the sake of proofing my process all right I, I felt it added a certain layer of um validity and credibility to the test uh and when you drag over, over glass all you do is you really you roll the edge over this actually grinds it off <laughs> and then when you go to set the bevel again you are forced to actually produce a brand new fresh bevel all right so um i did the slice thing to kill it on the corner go to 1.5k establish my bevel and then the 5k to uh get to semi-finished mid-range you know uh get set up for the 8k i use my microscope to preview my uh bevels to make sure that uh, everything was consistent i had set up a control group razor uh, there's another gold dollar that i work on so i would um i got this set up to absolutely drop dead perfect for shaving and i didn't shave with it and do anything with it i just put it on the side and before i went through a cycle i would take this edge view it on the scope take this edge view it on the scope and then go back and to make sure that i was looking at the same level of polish the same lack of striations and the same exact uh look all right so yeah it was like a little involved and it was a pain in the ass and there were days when it was just like you know i can't deal with this anymore but I felt that I needed to operate this way so I could eliminate as many variables and as many false positive and as many false negatives as uh, as I could so I could have like you know a real good you know view on stuff all right um, in between changing stones and, and honing everything I have another regimen that I do that I was very strict with um, you know I rinse the blade under running water I wipe with paper towel then I rinse again and um, that ensures that all of the particles from the previous stone the coarser particles from like say the 1.5k do not contaminate the start of my 5k um that was a little over the top 
but it really is a good practice and it really is something that we should look into because I tell you, um, there are times when I do that and I wipe after I rinse and I wipe, I still pick up, um, what do you call it? Uh, some swarf, uh, some, you know, darker colored swarf on the paper towel. So that absolutely has to interfere with the progress on the next stone to what degree I don't know, but it's there, you know, so I was able to remove it as best possible. So that's what I did. All right. Um, for every test, right, after I got through with the 8K, so let's say I went 1.5K, uh, 5K on the Shaftons, and then let's say I was working on the G1 uh, 8000 from King, all right, I would um, strop on linen and horsehide like I normally do, and I use the same two strops for roughly the same amount of time. I, I don't count, but it was like feel. So when I felt like everything was Gucci, then I would move on to the shave. But I used the same two strops for every test to make sure that I didn't add a variable in because uh, we all know that the different steels behave differently on different strops. And now um, for each test, I did at least three complete cycles with each blade. All right. A um, couple of them were a bunch more. It's, you got to work with this stuff for a long time. So I did a minimum of three complete cycles, you know, with every single 8K. And I did all of the cycles exactly the way I just told you. So this took some time. It also took some toll on uh, my razor. You might be looking at this and saying, that doesn't look right. <laughs> You might have a gold dollar and you might say, wow, the profile is like a little like it's. Yeah, because it's honed up a lot. How much honing got done to this? I'm going to drop a photo in here and you can see uh, I'm going to put it toe to toe with a new gold dollar. And um, you can see relatively how much I honed off of this one. And actually, this one was the the I knew this was going to happen. So I had all the gold dollars I had. I had a box full of them. Um, I, I picked the one that was had the widest blade, and it was notably wider than the others. So this disparity that you're going to see, it's actually greater than you imagine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, there's that. And um, this type of, um, uh, this approach to this test uh, was also complemented with me using the same exact brush and the same exact soap for every single test. Um, I'll admit that this drove me nuts for a while and I had to get away from it and I had to go like do other things and I even like, I, I shave with a Mach 3 in the middle of this, I shave with a double edge just to break it up because being like so anal retentive about every step was absolutely making me insane, okay? It was just like, it got to the point it almost got to the point where it wasn't fun, okay? It just became like this chore, especially the last one. It was like, come on, already, be done, you know? And then when I was done, it was like I went and got like this big fat wedge out and dialed it up and like just I let my beard grow for like for two and a half days and I, I just plowed through it and it was just like, ah, oh, yes. Anyway, so that was my process. And... um so I wanted to explain that so you know what it was I was doing. Anyway, stay tuned. We're about to get into the stones next. All right. Finally getting into the stones now. Here we have the king. It's a G1, 8,000. I think there's a G3. That's a little smaller. And I believe this also comes on a wooden base if you want it or a plastic base, some kind of die. I don't know. All right. Um, boxes, just whatever, cardboard. <clears throat> comes with uh, some type of instructions. Anyway, you have your gold stone, uh, your, your labeling, and all that good stuff on the back. Uh, very nice presentation. All right. Um, th this one's on the bottom of the pile for me. It, it is not exciting to me. This is uh, old world, old school stone. Um, you know, I was just... Uh, someone recently commented that they, uh, they like the Naniwa... Um, traditional stone because it feels like a, an old school type of whetstone. Uh, I, I don't like that type of stone. That's first. So that's why this gets pushed down first out of the gate. I, I don't like them. Uh, it's a soaker. 
you know. So that's something to deal with, but not necessarily a deal killer. Anyway, uh, the yellow on this reminds me of the Kitayama. All right, side by side, there's a difference in the coloring, but for whatever reason, it reminded me of it. And then the king here, if you look, uh, there are these splotches. Uh, you can, like, really see them, but this is, like, reddish, reddish, yellow, reddish kind of splotching. Anyway, um, and that's different than the Kitayama, so they're not the same stuff. Somebody once alluded to them being the same. They're not. Anyway, um, this was seriously not fat, flat when I got it. I mean, just, you know... Um, Putting a, a straight edge on it, even like not a, a great one, uh, showed that it was like way, way, way out of flat. Um, so it took some lapping, but it was pretty easy, and, and it's soft. Um, you can't like mark it with your nail. It's not soft like that, but it laps easy. So, you know, it's a hard stone, but it, it's soft in, in that regard, all right? Um, especially after you soak it, and you do need to soak these, all right? Um, when these are dry, this has a chalky feeling like the Kitayama does. And um, you kind of get that feeling still, even though it's soaked. But when it's soaked, it feels a lot smoother. All right. Uh, in the beginning, I soaked it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I put it in a tub. I put it under running water. It's not good to run water directly on a water stone. It's better to get a tub and then soak it. What happens is when water is coming out of the faucet and hitting directly, when you're done, you'll see like a darker area. That's from water being forced in. It, it's softer there than everywhere else. You're going to have a lack of consistency. Anyway, um, I, I think you need to soak a minimum of 15 minutes with this stone. I would actually suggest going a bit longer. Um, my initial soak wasn't good at all. It was, it was way too short, and the field was bumpy and gravelly. Then uh, 15, 20 minutes into it, it was better. And um, side by side with the Kitayama, um, the Kitayama felt a lot smoother to me <clears throat> anyway I don't like to soak stones for like a half an hour it's just like annoying to me you know but if you have to do it you have to do it um, after honing I looked at the striations on uh, the bevel you know and they were more pronounced they, they were deeper the, the grooves were wider all right that I'm trying to emulate a groove here <laughs> and um, the shadows were darker so they appeared to be deeper so um, I'm thinking that this is not as fine as uh, the other stones in the testing, right? Uh, the Norton and the Kitayama uh, both did a better job than this one. Um, the bevels look better on those stones. And, you know, I tried to shave off the stone. As I mentioned, I, I did all shave testing, and I could not finish the shaves off this stone. It did not fly for me. Um, you know the varying degrees of being able to shave there's the okay i cut the hairs and then there's the okay i cut the hairs without feeling like i'm ripping my face off and then so on and so on till you get to the point where like it's a velvet squeegee okay this is way down at the bottom of that list <laughs> not my thing okay uh for assets um i would say that this is a very available stone fairly inexpensive and the feedback is like it, like it's not like it doesn't make you it's not orgasmic but it's clear so a beginner would be able to understand as they progress you definitely get a good read from this stone um, a liability it's slow my god this stone is slow it's like half the speed of the Kitayama all right and and that could be a good thing but not to me <laughs> it, it's softer than I want a stone to be I don't find it to be a K um, the feedback is usable, but it's like not great. So in as much as it, the asset is reasonably okay feedback, you can get it. Uh, there are stones with better feedback. So that's like a push me, pull you at both sides of the fence. All right. And, and you have to soak the snot out of it to get anywhere. Right? Yeah, that's the, uh, the king, uh, 8,000 folks. And uh, that's my read on it. All right. We're back with the uh, second stone in the list, starting at the bottom. And here we have the um, venerable, <laughs> uh, much talked about Norton 8K. This is the combo. One side is 4K. That's the white side. The other side is 8K. That's yellow. Um, they come in this this box, and it they can be a pain in the ass to open, but it has feet, you know, and it has five feet, so it doesn't bow in the middle. So. You know, they put some thought into this. It has holes for venting and uh, drying. But I would not put a soaked stone in here to dry it. I don't think it would dry well. I think I would dry it outside of this. And then maybe after I thought this was dry, 
enough, I would put it in here. But I mean, it, it's you know, I like it when a manufacturer puts thought into their uh, packaging and what have you. And uh, the box doubles as a uh, honing, whatever pad station. It has little feet so the stone doesn't slide out is it a perfect fit no does it move around yes is it a little annoying sometimes but it's there and if you don't have anything that's a good thing to have the stone itself i won't lie i hate the stone <laughs> I, it was my uh one of my first whetstones and um i bought it because everyone said oh you gotta have it and the ak is all you need and then there was this other bullshit you can uh if you can't shave off uh, you can't if you can't get a comfortable shave off the ak norton you can't hone yeah uh for all the people that have ever regurgitated that bullshit that they read and they pontificate upon so they sound good you can bite me okay this is not an ak stone it's a three micron stone that equates to 5k gis and yes, I can hone on this, and yes, I can manage a shave, but that shave is not comfortable, okay? It is not good, it is not close, it is not anything, okay? It is not what I want for a finisher, and this stone is not, to me, it is not a finisher. Now, if you like it, that's fine. I don't. Deal, okay? So, you have that. Now, uh, the 8K is not a soaker, and the 4k is so if you have this and you want to use the 4k you have to soak it but then you wind up getting this too wet and then you create rubber so then you have to like figure out how to soak only half the stone so basically this is a stupid design in my opinion okay i think if you want to use the 8k norton all power to you go out and buy yourself a solid piece though so they come in a just a straight one grit stone um the polish looks bright under magnet uh, under bevel okay so you know i hone you know my gold dollars whatever and the um greaves the polish is bright under um magnification and i can see it with my 4x loop i don't need my big ass microscope um the polish is uneven it's brighter toward the edge and it's darker back towards the shinogi line which is that ridge right before the grind of the razor starts all right so um I think that has to do with the fact that it's a little soft and it'll slurry up pretty easily because I can see auto slurrying, okay? Um, so there's that. I can live with that. I can work with it, but it doesn't annoy me because I'm a visual person and it shouldn't be there in my opinion and I don't need it to be there. So, you know, I manage shaves using this uh, and following up with Crocs or uh, finishing on top of this with, uh, <laughs> at first, a codicule. Um, actually, I wound up at one point using... Um, a Naniwa AK Superstone after this and I put them side by side and I found that I go from here to there and the other stone was finer and uh, yeah I got into arguments and people just everybody knew everything and I was new and I couldn't possibly what what could I know you know um, ass hats <laughs> I found the documentation from Norton <clears throat> okay I found the book with the micron reading in it and I'm gonna drop it in right here Okay, so now you see Norton's own publication. It's a three micron stone. So, you know, uh, for the guy who was arguing that, oh, well, particle density and particle, they, 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 if this stone was made 100% out of whatever particle is in here with absolutely no PSD spread, it still would not be an AK stone. Sorry, no. You like it? Fine. I don't. It's better than the king. I would buy this before the king, but I would not buy the combo, right? I would buy the single block. Uh, the assets of this, they're readily available. It's fast, really good speed, all right? Just about splash and go. I'll call it splash and go. It's easy to lap. It's, it, it's a hard stone. You can't dent it, but um, it laps pretty quickly. You, get, you do get a bright polish for the people that like that mirrory look. This will start laying down that polish for you. Um, and you get decent feedback. Another huge, huge, huge asset of this stone. A lot of people know it and a lot of people use it. So if you're new and you buy it and you get jammed up, you can probably find like, I don't know, 18 gazillion people 
who have run into the same thing you have, and, and that's a big asset when you're starting out, all right? For liabilities, uh, you know, the, be the bevel's uneven. You know, and, and it's like it's something I identified right away early on. I, I discussed this at length with you know, people in Europe and they, they saw the same thing I was seeing. And whether or not it matters at the end of the day, who knows? But I like an even polish. So there's that. Um, it's not 8K. So that's an issue to me because why are you calling it an 8K if it's not an 8K? It's a combo stone, but I'm talking about the 8K. USA version here. But what you buy today is probably going to be different than this. All right. Moving on to the next stone now. Okay, we're up to the third stone. And uh, this one is a Kitayama. Comes in a simple box that's very reminiscent of uh, the boxes that uh, natural wet stones are sold in. Uh, I've been told that uh, these come from Emanishi, Emanishi uh, Stone Shop. I'm not really sure about that, but. Um, if that is the case, then uh, for sure, this box probably is uh, one of the ones from the stone inventory that they use for their regular uh, tenant issue. Anyway, um, this one arrived very flat. Uh, lapping it to dead flat was easy. Um, if you look at the stone up close, there's some gray and black and some sort of earth tone flex going on in here where the king had uh, like, a, like a red thing going on. So this has those types of flex. Um, initially, I soaked the stone for uh, what I was told, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And, um, you know, compared to the Norton AK, it felt softer and a little bit drier and smooth, but it didn't have that slippery sort of lubricated, plasticky kind of feeling that the Norton has. It didn't have that rubbery thing, okay? Uh, there's more of a chalky, dry sensation with this guy. You um, can hear it. You know, it's uh, got a nice, like, stone ring to it. Um, people were selling these as uh, 10 and 12K stones. And I would, like, read, well, it's an 8K stone, but it, it hones like a 10K, which, you know, that, and I think you could probably find those words still on the Internet if you look around long and hard enough. Um, and... When you step back and look at those words, you realize just like how stupid a claim that is. All right, but basically, what it comes down to is like I think Imanishi is, is, if he makes this, is out of the picture here. That it's just marketing people trying to move these stones to unsuspecting people. It, it's an 8K stone, it's not a 10K stone, it's not a 12K stone. It was never going to be either of those two things because simply it's a freaking 8K stone. All right. But um, anyway, so the hone, you know, um, initially I had to uh, uh, reconsider my initial soaking time because uh, my first attempts, it didn't work out. So I'd be like honing and I would feel like this, this bumpy thing, you know, and um, anyway, so I put it in for like 30 minutes, you know, and um, that was helpful. But I, I get to that story like a little more completely in a second. I just want to talk about the, the, the haze. The polish on the bevel was hazier than it was with the Norton. You know, and under the scope, uh, the polish was even, unlike the way the Norton was uneven, okay? But I, I was noticing that there was uh, noticeable microchipping um, in the griefs. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> not in the griefs. In the gold dollar, but the griefs was not chipping, all right? Um... Shaving on the griefs, okay, I, I picked up a feeling like, uh, kind of felt sort of like the Norton. It, it was like I was getting popping on the whiskers under my nose. I wasn't getting, like, slicing, right? Uh, the gold dollar um, it, it kept having this chipping thing, so I was unable to, uh, like, really complete a shave test with that. And this was bothering me, so... Um, and uh, what I did was <clears throat> I let it soak for like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. All right. And then automatically out of the gate, the feedback got a lot better. There was no chipping. All right. And the uh, shaves on the greaves from that uh, was a bit better also. So basically, like with this stone, I went through three full cycles and uh, had like 
toler not tolerable, but I was able to shave with the greaves and not with the gold dollar. And then I came back and did another three. Might have even have been three or four, um, maybe even more uh, sessions after that because I was kind of bugged with that chipping thing. And I just want to make sure I had ironed it out. But the shaves were smoother overall. And the edges looked finer. The striations looked finer. Under the scope, everything looked a whole lot better, and that was all a direct result of having soaked this for more than the uh, 15 to uh, 20 minutes initially. All right, so overall with the uh, Kitayama, you know, I'm putting it uh, ahead of the King and ahead of the Norton. Um, I still have not, um, out of these stones, achieved a comfortable shave off the AK. Um, but this was better than the other two, so I give it props for that. Uh, assets for this stone, it's a thick stone. It's fairly inexpensive. Uh, it's easy to lap. Um, the striations were consistent uh, across the bevel, so that's good. Um, it's a yellow color. So are the other two, and this was actually an asset for them also, but um, it's not that it's all that special. Most um, Finer grit stones tend to be a brighter color, but you get to see all your swarf, and that can be a good tell. Um, you know, and they're, they're pretty easy to get, right? Liabilities, it's a soaker, and it's a fussy soaker because you have to, like, soak it for a long enough period of time. So, you know, if you want to, like, just, like, get into honing, you, you can't. You, there's a delay there, and I don't think you can just leave this soaking. All right, it is capable of microchipping, so that's no good. Um... The feedback feels dry, uh, which isn't bad, but it, it doesn't give me like a really good feeling. Um, and I'm not convinced this is actually AK. I mean, it's an AK stone, but it's like I, I'm not really reading it on par with other stones that I use as a benchmark for AK. All right. But it's usable. And, um, you know, basically it's a pretty good stone. It's just not one that I would want to pull out all the time. It's not my choice, you know. So, um Anyway, that's my take on the Kitayama. All right, so we're up to the next stone. It's like the fourth one. This is the Sigma Power 8000. Uh, the presentation box and uh, delivery on this stone is uh, beautiful. Typical, you know, uh, we care about our stuff, uh, Japanese uh, type of uh, approach to things. Very nice stone. Um, the box is really nice, it's high class, no no skimping here at all, comes with some nice packaging inside, you got a sleeve, and you got this, uh, I don't know, instructions or something, and the stone itself is on a, uh, on a wood die, and uh, it, it's cut very well, you know, it's a little rough, it hasn't been sanded out, but this is a typical type of uh, honing platform that you would see for a natural stone in Japan. And um, yeah, you know, I didn't love it. I, I wanted to love the stone a lot. I really did. And uh, I just didn't love it. All right. Uh, it arrived not flat. Uh, lapping it was fairly easy, but you know, you have to lap it on this wood base and that's a pain in the ass. I wanted to get it without the wood base and it was unavailable. It took forever to get one too. It isn't like you could just like make a phone call and get one delivered. Um, the density and the feel kind of reminded me of the King and the Kitayama a little bit, but this feels finer and it feels like a more quality stone. It definitely does. It does. It feels more modern than those two stones do, if that makes any sense. Um, it's still a little bit soft and it does need a pile of soaking, right? Um, I did actually bump, um, the corner with one of my Shapton Pros and <laughs> it, it did dent it. So... Uh, it, it is not the most durable, rugged, hard, uh, you know, vitrified type of stone at all. You know, you have to baby it a little bit. Uh, the feedback was a little dry and not all that enjoyable. And um, it was smooth, you know, but there was a weird sort of grainy feeling to it. it it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, it feels better than the other stones that have preceded this, but it still doesn't have that like honing sensation that I'm looking for, that I'm used to, that I found in other stones. Good stone, just not like for me, really. Um, the polish wasn't as high as I had hoped for initially. I, I really thought that this was going to do a lot better in the sense of polish. Um, the Shaptons did better, you know, and while this did better than the King and the Norton and the Kitayama, I was kind of hoping that this one would be like, you know, a full cut above. But I was a little disappointed. 
I guess because I had heard a lot of good stuff about Sigma Power Stones and um, maybe the hype got to me or something. Look, it's a solid AK. You can hone on it. You can put it into your setup as an AK stone. But to me, it's not a special AK, and I really like my stones to give me that special feeling. That's just me, you know? It's just that everything combined, which makes up the honing thing for me, uh, it just wasn't there. All right, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a ball of wax. It, it's a big picture. It's not just A B C one two three. We're done. It's not an Excel sheet. It's not just a, a bullet pointed list. A lot of things factor into my honing stuff. So, you know, that's for me. Other people are different, I guess. And we're still not in a zone where, like, I'm starting to think that, like, maybe I can actually, like, have a plausible shave off of an AK. Even at this point, I'm still not there. For assets, it came uh, on a nice die. That's very nice. It's a white stone. Shows everything. I love a white AK. Uh, it's lightweight. Not too uh, difficult to deal with. And it wasn't too expensive either. All right, so that's good. Liabilities, it's a soaker. It's a little softer. And, you know, it's not all that fine. You know, um, out of the stones thus far, I would pick this over the other ones in a heartbeat. You know, I really would. Anyway, so that's my take on the Sigma Power. And um, stay tuned for the next stone. All right, so here we are, moving along, you know, and um, getting into the midway part of the story. And we're getting into the stones that I prefer more. You know, and um, we're starting off uh, that run, that leg of the journey um, with the, uh, you know, the, um, what do you call them, the Shapton glass stones. All right. And I'm going to do these individually. I'm just showing you these two here side by side because I, ironically or whatever, they, they scored side by side um, in the uh, testing. So um, I'm starting off with the HR, you know, <clears throat> which is the uh, typical glass stone, you know. And um, a lot of people don't know or don't realize that there's another version of a couple of the different grits, you know. Um, I forget exactly which ones they are, to be honest. I, I can't remember. Um, but the 8000s, there's an HR and uh, an HC. Now, I don't know if you can tell here under this crappy lighting with my phone uh, taking the image. But this, okay, is the HC. And it's grayer than uh, the white one and um, I have a photo showing that and I'm going to drop it in right here now that you've seen that uh, cl more clearly than what I was able to show you on video um, I'm just going to take this stone out and um, you know this stone arrived not flat you know and um, Getting it dead flat took a lot of effort, okay? It was very, it's a hard stone. It's a lot harder than even the HC, you know? Um, it's harder than uh, the stones before it. Uh, it's wear resistance was better. Um, so you have that. The packaging, the packaging is freaking awesome. It's like if James Bond honed razors, he would probably have a set of these stones. It's almost like you kind of feel like if you had a set of them, you could like fit it in your pocket or something. You can't, you wouldn't, it's, it's really too fat. But um, it's got that slick kind of, you know, slip case type of thing going on. And it's also a little scary because you can pick this up and the stone can literally slide out under weight. So you kind of have to be cognizant of that. If I made these, I probably would have had the slip case up on top. So when I was holding it with the writing facing me, the stone wouldn't pull it out of the bottom. Small point. Anyway, I like the packaging. And I like when manufacturers put work and thought into their packaging. However, we're here to hone, not package, so that's a something, right? Um, anyway, so this is the HR, and I think that stands for high resistance. You know, um, some people say high rock. Well, I, I, I don't know, man. It's like, it, who knows what's going on in Shapton's head over there, all right? Um, <clears throat> the feedback of this was not tremendous. It feels a little rough to me. It's not really joyous. I, it didn't really feel consistent either. I, it, the, the work turned out consistent. I just didn't like the, the, the feeling. In general, though, this is the first stone has a real good solid, like good real feeling to me. And um, it is not far off of the feeling from the Shapton Pro Stone 8K, which is nice. I enjoy that. The polish of this was good, hands down. It was a hair less 
than it was off the HC. And, you know, for me, polish, I, I judge it. Like I'm standing here, I, there's lights up above me, right? And those lights are in a fixed position. And I use a loop. I don't know where the hell my loop is. There it is. Um, I use this loop all the time. And I, I stand in the same place and I look the same way and I look at the same distance to the light. And I judge my polish by how much of my overhead lighting system I can see and how clearly. So if I can like see the whole bulb, like I can almost read the writing on the bulb, then you know, that's really high. And then anything less than that in varying degrees is, well, less than that. And, you know, I just kind of figure it out as I go along. The shaves off this was smoother than I expected. All right. I had a mixture of uh, popping and slicing. First time. Okay. Pop, slice, pop, slice. Uh, there was more popping, but there was some slicing. Okay. So I have to say this was a barely tolerable AK. I'm not going to say it was a comfortable shave. It was not. It was not a close shave. It was not a wonderful shave. It is not something that I would look to for a daily shaving experience. But this stone here and this line of 10 stones makes the new mark. Okay. And um, at this point, you know, I was like, at, <laughs> up until this point, I was kind of really getting sick and tired of, of shaving uh, off those edges and it was driving me nuts. Now here, it was just like a, a breath of fresh air. I was actually, you know, feeling that slicing thing and no tugging and, and that was good. Um, I have to say a couple of things. I, 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 okay, so you're looking at the stone, you're like, what's going on? Okay, so you see this translucent section, uh, that's glass. That's why they call them glass stones. They put the binder on glass. So this little thin strip is is your binder, you know, and, you know, I'll be honest, I, I kind of feel gypped, I kind of feel cheated, because, like, here's a pro stone. This is all stone. <laughs> you know, this is like 15 millimeters of abrasive. This is five. Now, I hone a lot. That means a lot to me, okay? And it's on glass. I, whose bright idea was it to put abrasive stone on glass I, i'm i'm i got stones all around it's in a sink it's wet my hands are slippery it's it's like it's asking for a disaster to happen i could see myself slipping dropping this just recently i dropped my atoma and i crashed my ak uh, pro stone if i would have done that with this i would shatter it and it would be done it's over sayonara okay uh, the the Shapton Pro, I was able to like lap out the grief, but this, if I hit the back, forget about it. So I kind of feel that the glass is dumb, and I get it. it it's glass, so it's easy to make flat. So the flat glass is going to keep the stone flat, or it's going to stop it from warping. So I understand that, but couldn't you find another material? I don't know, aluminum, something. I don't know. I Me mean, just, I <laughs> give me 15 millimeters of stone like you do with the Pro Stone. I would dig that. I kind of enjoyed honing on this. Um, it's true, splash and go, true, you know, um, and put a little water down on it, okay, it's white, so, you know, no, uh, no swarf, uh, all swarf shows, rather, um, so, you know, the assets, it's lightweight, it's a white stone, shows all the swarf, it's fast, very fast stone, consistent uh, bevels, good polish, uh, the glass might help this, you know, not, warp but I, I guess it's a liability but to me it's uh, excuse me i guess that's an asset but to me it's a liability um i wasn't really excited about the feedback on uh, on the liability side the feedback was like yeah glass breaks so there's that so it glass can be on either side of that fence you don't get a lot of stone i think that's bogus um, it was delivered very unflat. That was annoying as hell. Uh, I lost a lot of stone flattening it off, and it wasn't a lot to start off with, so that really ticked me off. And um, actually, both sides of the stone look really dirty, and I think it has something to do with the box, the ink from the... I don't know, man, but whatever. The, the sides were really dirty. So that was aggravating. How do you clean that up? What a, you can't really lap glass. I had to go in there with sandpaper and whatever, but um, yeah, the, the feedback, man. See... All right, now here it's a little better than it has been for me in the past. So maybe I've been like a little harsh on it, but now nah, there it goes again. It's like, I don't know. I could hone with this if this was my AK, I would be okay. Actually, the feedback here right now feels better than it has been any other single time I've honed on it. And like, I think the last time I honed on it was like in February. Um, so go figure, I don't know. I still feel a little bit of that, like, not smooth feeling in there, but I don't know. 
the uh, that's the HR. The HC was a lot better. So anyway, um, see, it's always good to keep testing. So, uh, sometimes stones just have to wear down a lot. Then all of a sudden, your feedback is like awesome, you know. And um, as much as I've gone through three cycles with each of these stones, sometimes going through 20 cycles might bring you where you got to be. Uh, right now, I think the feedback was better, so I'm almost willing to take uh, the the knock in the liability section um, uh, on the feedback out. But it is what it is. It's still like five millimeters of stone on glass. That's just dumb, if you ask me. Anyway, so instead of breaking, I'm going to go right to the HC the HC version of the 8000 glass stone, uh, simply because it is uh, natural to do so. The kissing cousins, the HR and the HC, and um, distributors can never really give you a clear answer on, on what the difference is. And they'll talk about, you know, like polish on high carbon or, you know, people who want a higher polish should go with HC than HR. And like, who doesn't want a higher polish? Does someone actually come in the store and say, I want an 8000 with less polish? You know, so all of that is just bullshit. All right, it's marketing crap. All right, um, the stone was not flat on arrival, but it was uh, close, and making it dead flat was a piece of cake. So uh, initially, I thought the stone was softer. All right, totally splash and go, no soaking. Even though it's gray, it's basically white. Uh, the gray makes it ugly, but you still see all of your swarf right away. Maybe you see more in the pure white, but um, this was still, I guess, I don't know, white enough. Um, and even though that I felt it was softer, it didn't feel like all that much softer, but that softness was there. In general, the feeling is smooth, a little dry, maybe a little dry, sure. Uh, feels like um, a very dense, very textured grain running through like clay mud, but that like that clay mud that's like it squishes between your finger, like making a vase on, on a wheel or something, like that really good clay, all right? There's a texture there, but it's like got a sexy sensation to it, all right? And uh, again, about the softness, even though the stone reads to me basically as being softer, at the same time, I don't see any, I did not see any additional wear or dishing. Okay, so I don't I don't understand that. So maybe it's softer, but the wear resistance is better. Maybe the abrasive is a little bit harder or something, or maybe there's more of it. I really don't understand because they don't tell us. More natural and less fake, all right, than the other stones that have come before it, especially like the Norton, which was like terrible. This has a little bit more natural feeling than all of them, in, including the uh, the HR. Uh, it's not as hard feeling as a Shapton AK or a Chosera stone or the Snow White, all right. Um, uh, as far as the polish goes, the polish on the bevels was excellent, uh, very near mirror, all right? This is, uh, actually, I'm going to say that it was a, a nudge better than the um, AK Nani, uh, the uh, specialty stone, a little bit better than that. Not quite as high as uh, what you get on the Fuji, but it was extremely good. Striations were fairly, but not, it, it, they were very even, but they weren't absolutely perfect. Um, there were a few minor rogue scratches here and there, but it was all very minor stuff, but it was there. The shaves are what matters, and the shaves were better, and we're getting uh, notably better here. Um, I think the gold dollar did better off this stone than the greaves, okay? Um, under my nose, that tough area, there was more slicing than before, still some popping, you know? And... Um, I think it with this stone, the first time, the slicing outweighed the popping, you know. Um, it was an above par 8K shave. I'm still not where I want to be. I'm still not, like, really ecstatic with, with shaving off of this thing. But I'm, I'm getting hope, and I'm, I'm feeling better about it overall. And I'm, I'm fairly impressed with this stone, actually. Um, assets on this stone, fast stone, lightweight, okay. Um... Theoretically, the glass will keep it flatter longer. I don't know. The packaging is uh, slick, as I mentioned on the uh, other version. Uh, good feedback, better than the other stone. Liabilities wise, uh, glass, no good. Cracks, expensive, man. Both of these, um, um, adding a liability to the uh, HR. These are costly uh, AKs. Uh, you only get five millimeters of stone. Um, this is fairly ugly to look at. And, um, you know, that's about it. Um, if I was going to pick one of the two glass stones, I would pick this one. I, I probably would not choose to have a glass stone as my 8K. Um, but if I had to, I, I would pick this version just because um, it's a solid stone. If you have it, you would be happy with it for the most part, I think. Um, 
unless of course you were used to honing on the next stones that I'm going to get to because you might like them better. Anyway, that's my take on the glass stones and uh, a little deeper into the zone of the AKs I prefer. Um, this is the Shapton Pro. This is the non-export version for Japan, Hano Kuromaku, something to that effect. Um, this is my personal stone, actually. Um, you can see I've got it marked AK because I, I, I just do stuff like that. I sharpied it and then whatever. Uh, this is how they come. This is new. I'm not going to open this because, you know, I sell these and, you know, I actually, I opened them before they actually go to the customer. So I, I do that so I can check to make sure that the stone is uh, in good shape. No problems, no cracks or whatever. And um, comes with this lovely stuff. There's a little piece of instruction in there sometimes, not all the time. Um, they call this color melon, you know. And it's got this nice box. And again, it has feet, but it's only four feet, so the middle could theoretically bow. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Norton. But, all right, the Norton has the fifth foot, so it's got more support. So the Norton case wins there. But this has, I think, more and larger openings, so the ventilation here is uh, better, I think. I don't know. It's a guess. Uh, again, it's not important because I don't think I would <clears throat> put a wet stone in there to dry. comes with a nice piece of foam. You close it. It clips. And the top is a little tray. And again, the stone moves just like it does with the Norton. But it's a nice asset. And if you don't have a honing pad, then you have this and you have something. So that's good. And like I've said repeatedly, I like it when the manufacturer puts thought into their packaging. They're thinking about the customer, their needs. And it's always a good sign. Anyway, this, this is my personal uh, version. This is the one I use um, on a regular basis. I don't often hone on AK, so this stone looks pretty unscathed. But when I do use an AK, um, this would be the first one I grab. Um, AK is not a, a finish for me. So when I'm honing, I have, uh, if I'm going to use synths, I have a 1.5K Shapton Pro, I have a 5K Shapton Pro, and then I have this. Most of the time, it's going to be the first two stones. Only when I want to little, do a little more synthetic refinement, I'll go to AK. It just makes my uh, JNAP progression a little uh, simpler, easier. I prefer to just use the first two synths, though. But this is an AK topic, and I do have one. I do use one, so that's there. Uh, it's a great stone. It is totally splash and go. Um, I really like this stone because it's a workhorse. It is not the finest AK out of the ones that I'm uh, testing. Uh, it's a good stone. You know, I, I, I like it. Uh, the feedback is is good. All right. It's uh, smooth, but there is a feeling there that lets me know what's going on. I find this to be better feedback than what I get with the glass stones. Um, I think mostly I score this higher though because I got a full stone. I think the HC is comparable to the Shapton Pro, but I prefer the Shapton Pro, this stone, because uh, it's a full size stone. All right. Um, go back and forth maybe maybe the hc has a slightly more mirrored polish i, I would have to sit down and, and really scope that out uh, the mirror off of this is very good it's not absolutely like the brightest uh, of all of them uh, to be completely honest the uh, naniwa uh, superstone uh, puts a, a brighter polish a, a clearer polish um, on the bevel than this does this is still the stone i use on a regular basis i prefer the feedback i prefer the harder I prefer that vitrified feel. Um, I love the feedback here more. The Naniwa is a little more muted. Um, I, I rated the Naniwa higher because it's, it's theoretically a higher performing stone. This stone, these stones come mostly flat and uh, you, you still have to lap them dead flat and they are hard so it takes some effort, you know. Um, true splash and go, like I said before, it literally feels like you're working on a very thick, hard, dense ceramic plate. It's got that kind of feel, but this te texture, so it's not like dead glass kind of feeling. It's a good live stone. Um, 
under the scope, you know, bevels and edges, uh, they, they, they look like most excellent. They, uh, all the striations are lined up like wonderfully. Um, very, very few, if any, distractions, like no rogues at all. Everything was like going like, like tin soldiers. I love that about these stones. Um, theoretically, uh, theoretically, uh, you know, uh, subjectively, the striations look uh, thinner, closer together, and less deep than the stones before it, except for maybe, maybe the HC. Uh, uh, hard to say, you know. Um, <clears throat> I really like honing on this stone. And I've been using them for a bunch of years, and I, I moved to these stones from Choceras, so that should tell you something. I love my Choceras, but they prove to be have too many liabilities. Um, this stone gets, well, all of my pro stones, they get used a lot. This one doesn't get used as much as the others, but they get wet and dry, wet and dry, wet and dry, and none of them ever craze, and none of them ever crack. You know, So um, I, I really enjoy that, that level of security that I get from uh, using these. Now, that level of confidence is uh, worth its weight in gold. When I put a stone on the window so it'll dry, I don't wanna have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna pick it up and see like spider veins in it. Um, very good feedback, very good feeling. Um, overall, the shaves um, were very good off this stone, very, very good. All the Shaptons, you know, did very good for shave testing for the most part. Um, with this one, um, I, I kind of feel like I, I was moving definitely a little further into the direction of like what, what I'm looking for, like my, my refinement uh, process, you know, to give me. All right. Uh, I would not say the shave off of this was a comfortable or a good shave. Okay. It was better than the rest so far. Uh, I'm developing more hope. There was more slicing. There was still popping. Okay, but there was more slicing here, and again, it's very close to what I was getting with the HC. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, got to keep that that comparison going there. All right, but um, I, I I got a plausible shave from here, plausible shave uh, in the sense that you know I was taking hair off my face, there was no tugging, and I was getting more slicing than there was popping. You know, uh, still not where I wanted to be, but definitely an improvement over some of the earlier stones so that part is good assets with this stone it's harder and i love that okay splash and go definitely a, an excellent thing uh very 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 consistent bevels that means my next step is going to be a lot easier okay and i'm not going to wind up with some weirdness um the lack of rogue scratches is a huge deal for me that means my polish is going to go down like like sweet and solid and be awesome all right um <clears throat> and like I said, the polish was bright. Could be brighter, but it was still bright. Was it brighter than the HR? Nah, I don't know. I just know that it's not as bright as the Superstone. So I'll say that. Um, liabilities, you know, yeah, it's a 15K. Uh, it's, excuse me, it's a 15 millimeter stone. So, you know, there's that. It, it's thicker than a glass stone, but it's not as thick as like, you know, the specialty stone that you're about to see in the next uh, segment. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but, you know, <clears throat> and perhaps it's not quite 8K in the scheme of things. Uh, the greenish color, I think it hides some swarf, so that's something to consider. But overall, uh, out of all the stones that are in this uh, pile today, I would probably grab this 8K first because um, I like the way the stone feels. I'm used to using the Pro Stones. And it's just, it gives me the feedback and the sensation that I'm looking for. And that, that's a huge concern for me. All right. So anyway, that's my take on the uh, Shapton Pro 8K. Okay, next up, we have the uh, Naniwa Sharpening Stone. Okay. Um, these used to be called Super Stones. Okay. Back when they were Super Stones, there was a thin one on a base and a thick one. I think the thick was 20 millimeter. Thin was, I don't know, 10 on the base. Uh, the bases were flimsy, plastic, kind of annoying, um, but they were less expensive. I had a full set and then some of the bigger ones. I started out with a set of the thinner ones and I, I just couldn't deal with the bases. I moved up to the thick ones and found that I enjoyed the thicker stone for a number of reasons, easier lapping and um, uh, just better pushback from the stone. Now, today, 
Uh, they're not called super stones. They're supposedly reformulated. So this one, the thicker one, is called sharpening stone. And then the skinny version, which is like 10 millimeters, but not on the base, is called the specialty stone. All right. Um, I've had a bunch of specialty stones. Just test them out. This is the only sharpening stone uh, version that I've had. Um, I got it basically to uh, do this uh, project. Um, the box it comes in is flimsy. It's cheap. I hate the way it looks. I don't like this looks like a label, but it's not a label. It's just this big block of white sitting on what could have been a pretty decent, you know, uh, color scheme. And maybe if they use like a substantial cardboard, you wouldn't mind storing your stone in here. Although if you turn it around and do this, it's a little bit better and you can slide it in and out of your drawer and I don't know, put a piece of paper on top to keep it clean. That's a little bit better. But overall, I think the box is cheap and it annoys me because the stone is fairly expensive. However, it's a good stone. Um, out of the stones thus far, I get the highest polished, uh, the brightest, most reflective, clearly reflecting bevel off of this okay um when this showed up when on arrival it was not flat okay and getting it dead flat took a long time all right i had to lap this way longer with my 140 atoma than i would have imagined and it just seemed to go on forever uh this is not a particularly hard stone i mean it, it's hard and all but you hear that it's dull right um it's not that vitrified hard feeling okay um you can't really dent it with your fingernail i guess maybe you could easily it's a resin type of thing uh, it's still a ceramic stone but people call this resin or resinoid type because it's more plasticky and it definitely has that i i don't like the way it feels actually the, the feedback it's very smooth and people sometimes really like that but i kind of feel like i'm honing on a block of polymer and i don't dig that you know, it's yellow. You can see all your swarf. Uh, that's sweet. It's got some speckles running through it like most of the Superstones do, did. Um, you know, but um, you can't deny that it's a good polishing stone. Okay. Uh, it does have a hollow cheesy feeling because of that polymer thing. And the feedback is kind of like that, although the feedback is easy to read. But you definitely feel like you're on something other than natural stone, and markedly so. A Chosera uh, or a Snow White, they have more of a natural rock feeling. So did the Shapton Pro, all right? And uh, so did the Shapton Glass Stones, actually, were markedly more real feeling uh, than this. This isn't like the Norton, but they're both in kind of the same zone with that polymer fake man-made type of thing oh look it is what it is it's man-made stone uh it does a good job it's solid piece i would recommend buying one of these if you don't have an ak in a heartbeat um the polished 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 polish man sweet even um you know not quite as mirror as i got from snow white or fuji man but <laughs> serious good polish all right um really makes it like your eyes pop open you're like you're starting to feel good about it you know um the shaves compared to everything up until now all right i have to say it was better okay there was more slicing less popping no tugging um i was starting to feel here that yeah you know what um i'm in a decent zone and i'm starting to feel like this is really ak gist i mean i i think this is a uh, gonna be like my bench mark for like what 8k like is to me i mean i don't have a way to pull the particles out and measure them but that's how i feel and um the shave wasn't where i want it to be i would not call it exactly comfortable the shave was plausible it was more comfortable than what i got from the stones before it was still not what i would call a comfortable stone and i would hesitate to say this but i would say it I will, I will still say that it was an uncomfortable shave, but it was just, you know, markedly better than everything that came before it. Um, assets on this stone, you know, uh, totally splash and go, super splash and go, like no water absorption, you know, um, just, just really, really nice, you know. Um, it's a pretty lightweight stone. It's readily available, you know, they're, they're like everywhere, you know. Um, you can get it in a thinner size and and that's really good okay because if you don't have uh, 
all the coin to get the big version at least you can get the small one and still be working with a, a quality piece of stone so that that to me is a very nice option all right um the feedback the feedback all right we're going into uh liabilities um it's a little softer and it feels a little fake and very unflat out of the box and the box was cheap garbage and that may sound like i'm being hard on the stone but when you start spending money on stuff and you're like you know you want to like look at the whole picture like what what's the value what are you getting for your investment hands down it's a solid stone you know i i would recommend super stones uh excuse me sharpening stones specialty stones i would i recommend them in a minute okay um bang for your buck wise i think this is a good system to be in i still prefer the shafton pro system all right i think you wind up spending about the same or a little bit less i like the feedback better on those stones but you know there are things to to weigh in okay the shaftons are about as long and maybe just about as wide but they're not as thick all right so that's something you got to be aware of when you're spending your money uh to me the shaftons are still a better deal because i like honing on them more but i just want to say it is a solid stone it's a solid AK. Uh, can't go wrong buying this. Can't go wrong using it. I basically, when uh, I learned to hone on these, you know, I started off, I got a Norton, and I did use it, but, like, I was so, like, not having that stone. And I moved over to uh, the Superstones, <clears throat> and I bought, like, a whole set of them, and I found that the uh, Norton AK was basically giving me the same relative um, sharpness as... Uh, the 5k nani you know that this is this is where i started to like learn you know like what was going on in the world of stones and what was going to be working for me so i, I have a soft spot uh for these stones I, I really do um but past the emotional thing you know uh objectively they're a great system uh the value is high and you can't go wrong buying them highly recommended great stuff all right that's all i got on the naniwa specialty and sharpening stone ak moving on now to the next two the final two in the series stay tuned okay so here we are <clears throat> the number two stone naniwa shrimp mark 8k snow white um this is one of the first stones that i ever used that that just made me like crazy like fall for it i found out about it by reading um posts on uh the knife sharpening forums i used to lurk there back in the early 2000s um and i would read everything i would read everything everybody wrote and then play the concentration game where you like line everything up in your head so um i had read about this and people were saying that this was um so very close to the uh, chosera 10k that um it made buying the 10k uh almost ridiculous at the time that stone was like 300 bucks um this at the time was like 90 95 so that was a huge deal you know uh when i switched from uh, superstones over to choceras a lot of people um at the time didn't think it was worth it and um i thought it was worth it and i still do i think they're a uh, a great system they have liabilities but you know i uh, that 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 move really helped me out um Anyway, so this is Snow White and uh, Magnesia Bond Stone, you know, and this is the box, and the box is, is cheesy. It's like the Super Stone, but it's a little bit better. It has this nice window, so if you have the stone in like this, all right, uh, you get you get to see that, you know. So, you know, a little bit of presentation, a little bit thinking about the customer, but overall, the execution on the box is a little lacking, but... Um, I'll give it a pass. <laughs> uh, the stone rocks. It's just awesome. Um, this is the only stone in Naniwa's lineup where they use the terms finisher or finishing and polishing. All right. Um, I, I found the catalog 
uh, with uh, that or that references that and I'm going to drop in a clip from that page here so you got to figure if Naniwa is saying that you know this is a polisher and this is a finisher and and even the 10k Chosera didn't say that right you got to figure that they felt it was really special um, <clears throat> I started using this and uh, immediately benched uh, anything else that I had at the time that was AK. You know, the polish off this is is crazy good. You know, um, when it arrives, I, I remember vividly. It was pretty flat, but not dead flat. And making it dead flat, um, that was work because <laughs> it's a hard stone. Some effort was required for sure. Um, it's a hard splash and go type, of, um, you know, again, no water absorption, just throw water down and you're ready to go. Um, it is significantly thicker than a Shapton Pro AK, so it uh, has that advantage. It's more expensive than a Shapton Pro AK, but not so much more expensive where it's like your eyebrow goes up, but it costs more money, usually. Um, the feedback on this is smoother than the Shapton, okay? And uh, how do I say it? Um... It, this has the same sort of hardness sensation, but it doesn't have that vitrified, glassy feeling. Again, it's you, you have almost that same pitch, but this is a little duller than the Shapton. And um, you, you just get a better feedback off of it. And it, it might be like splitting hairs there, but uh, those little tiny incremental uh, bumps up in performance add up to a lot to me, you know. Um, the stone is all white and it shows every bit of swarf instantly. If I come to this stone from a 5k and I get heavy swarf, I know I blew the 5k work and I got to go back. When I move from 5k to this, I should have almost no swarf. There'll be like a little tiny gray trail. Uh, that, that's like something, okay? That's fine. I'm talking about like, you know, you get like a black pencil line of swarf. No good, okay? And, and this stone lets you know, like no joke, you screwed up. Like, boom, it lets you know that there's no like, oh, well, is it maybe? No, <laughs> there's no getting around it. Okay, you're either on or you're off, all right? Um, the mirror polish on this is higher than everything else so far, notably so, notably higher, clearer than the uh, Superstone. Um, on the scope, the bevel edges look pin perfect. Uh, I would say that they're even more consistent than they were with the Shapton, although that's a hard call. You know, uh, but side by side, I kind of got that feeling. Um, the line at the actual edge is always, to me, with this stone, like, it, it just absolutely pin perfect, you know? Because you always have those, like, little micro teeth. You always see them, okay? It just depends on, they're always there. It depends on how much magnification you use. When I use what I call stupid magnification, and I get, like, really in there, like, it's way more even there with this stone, all right? Um, shaves. Because this is what really matters okay the shaves were better here uh, minimal popping couple of pops mostly slicing very smooth slicing absolutely no tugging um, this was the best shave uh, stone so far uh, you didn't get BBS no it's not like that and uh, but it was tolerable and I think I've moved into a comfortable zone but it's just barely comfortable so I had I hesitate to say that that shaving off of this is a comfortable shave it's comparative because to me you know I shave with, you know, I, I don't know, pick one of my blades here, like this guy, right? Uh, this big ass Wade and, uh, Butcher. Um, this thing plows whiskers off my face like your windshield wiper it takes water off the glass. Okay, so is, is shaving off this like that? No, it is not. <laughs> it's light years better than everything else um, before the, uh, excuse me, the HC uh, Shapton, but um, it's also better than the HC. And the stones that followed it. Uh, this is really uh, pinnacle for me. Uh, well, it's almost pinnacle. The Fuji is the next stone, and it's actually a little bit better. But I, I actually prefer the feedback on this better. I prefer the feel of the stone better on this. Um, assets on this stone, very hard, very fast, very consistent, very shallow striations. Uh, you know, this is uh, subjective. I don't have a depth gauge to go in there and measure it, but looking out on my scope, with the same lighting uh, comparatively they appear to be much shallower than everything else uh, the polish is exceedingly bright and clear very mirror um, the pure white surface tells all it's splash and go the feedback is is kicking I love it best in class um, period 
you know, it's even better than the top dog, Fuji. Uh, liabilities, yeah, it's expensive, not always available. It's a magnesium bond stone, and they're known to craze and crack. Mine, I've had a couple. None of them have crazed and cracked, but I, I know people that have had them, and they've crazed and cracked, and that's a heartbreaker, okay? That's a heartbreaker, and it's something to weigh in to uh, the purchase. But, um, yeah, great stone. Absolutely great stone. Um, there's a uh, there's another white stone that was erroneously reported by uh, some hone guru uh, as being the uh, replacement for Snow White, the reformulation. Okay, uh, that was like the worst information to ever come out of that guy's mouth, and um, and there's been a lot of bad information come out of that guy's mouth. Uh, anyway, uh, with Snow White is still being made. It has not been reformulated. The white stone in question was uh, actually, I believe, the traditional stone. It's the AK out of there. And people were buying them and being like, oh, these Snow Whites, they suck. And I'm like, that's not a Snow White. Nobody listened to me. It's like a thing with this milieu that we're in it's like i'm saying that's not snow white and they're like oh but this guy who knows everything he says yeah he he's an asshat and he's like you can tell the guy's lying because his jaw is moving i love honing on this stone um i have sold it and bought it back it's really the only like stone like that i mean i've like i bought the 8k super stone replacement for the video but <clears throat> i'm not going to keep that this i'm going to keep all right um and I almost want to buy another one just to have a backup. And I know that's sick, right? But especially since I don't use AKs. But that's how, how good I feel about this stone. So that's it. That's all I got on this. Um, uh, highly recommended piece. Even if you already have an 8K, I think if you're serious about sharpening, you owe it to yourself to give this a spin. For cutlery, it's like off the hook. Hardness is great. I, I can't do really cutlery on... Um, the uh, super stone types because they're, 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 the angle goes wrong. Boom, you gouge. This doesn't gouge. Um, and the feel is great on all types. Stainless, carbon, you know, uh, clad blades, all that stuff. Fantastic uh, for putting a high polish if you're into that type of thing with cutlery. I'm usually not. I make a working edge, but I do have a couple of reasons to literally have like a razor edge. So I will use this to do that. Uh, highly recommended stone. Anyway, that's all I got on Snow White. And um, moving on now to the next and final stone, the Naniwa Fuji. All right, here we are with the last entry in the top 10 list of uh, eight case. This is the um, fabled Naniwa Fuji from the Gaokin series. Uh, there's a few stones in the series. There's a 1K that I hate. There's a 4K that I love. I have the 4K. I use it in conjunction with the 8K. It's a perfect one to hit. But um, this is about uh, this stone, the 8K, so I'll, I'll stick to that uh, bit of story. Anyway, this is the box that comes in. It's a typical box, a little flimsy. You could put one side inside the other and make a decent tray, but, yeah, that, that, that could be better. <laughs> um, overall, you know, great stone. You know, when it showed up, uh, it was pretty flat, not dead flat, but I could have honed on it. Uh, getting it perfectly flat was fairly easy. It's a hard stone, uh, but it seems to blend traits of like the Superstone and Chosera in a way. I don't know. That, that's my take on it. Uh, if you listen to it, 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 it it's dull. You know, uh, it doesn't have that ring. Um, so in a way, it kind of has the feeling of the sharpening stone, specialty stone, you know, the old super stones. It kind of has a little bit of that plasticky feel to it, you know. Um, it's not as dense as a Chosera or the um, Snow White, but it's not as resiny feeling as the super stone type of stone either. Uh, there is a little bit of a hollow feeling to it like I get with the uh, sharpening stone. But it's, it's a little different, too. It's kind of like a blend of those two types of things, which maybe is what they were trying to do. I don't know. The feedback is super smooth. It's like being on a 10K or a 12K. Um, the polish is, is way high. It's like super mirror, okay? And on a scope, the uh, uh, Strio are just so impressively even. It's just drop-dead gorgeous. All right, uh, the shaves. You know, or what matters? Sheffield was like, no, there was no popping. Okay, none. All right. Um, 
there was a hint of popping with the gold dollar. Overall, I'd say the shaves are okay. Um, I could shave off this reasonably comfortably. It would not be as close a shave as I'm used to. There was no tugging. There was no real irritation of any type. It didn't feel like super duper smooth, but I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't in pain. There was no like red skin. There was none of that other stuff. So um, basically, um, putting this on, on top of the pile, okay, for uh, overall sharpening, you know, performance. All right. Um, it's the finest AK I have. It's marginal compared to the Snow White, okay, and, and I prefer the feedback on the Snow White. And this stone actually comes to me because of my love for the Snow White. Um, a friend of mine in Japan who goes to Kazuro Kai every year, and he's really close to all those guys that win all those awards with those crazy wood shavings that are like, you know, transparent. Um, he came back from uh, that particular event and said, Keith, you got to try the stone. The stone just beat out Snow White. I, I couldn't believe it. But, you know, this guy pulled off like a two micron shaving using the stone. And it's just like, wow, you got to try it. So uh, he sent me this one. This is it, you know, and I've been using it. Now, I don't use AKs a lot. So uh, when I do use it, it's just like it's so impressive. I, I can actually basically use uh, this as a finisher. The edge is still lacking to me. But I can say that it's not uncomfortable, you know. I wish it was closer, but I'm not getting irritation. And, um, you know, so that's why I have it on top of the pile, right. Um, I prefer the feedback on Snow White. So I'm actually going to pull out Snow White first because I never finish on AK. It's a finisher. I can use it as a, as, as a sort of an interim finisher. If I just was in a rush, I could do that. But I can do that with Snow White too. To some degree, this is a little bit more so, but uh, the Snow White has a better feedback and a better feel to me. Um, so I'm inclined to grab that first, you know. Um, so I went like the second round with this after I did uh, the typical uh, three cycles with both blades, you know. So I had like six full shaves in on this, and um, I had been working uh, the stones using the 1.5k Shapton and then the uh, what do you call it? Of the 5k shaft and then coming to 8k so that was my baseline so now that i had my read you know with that uh progression i wanted to um do a little bit of a change for this stone because you know the fuji is like a sister stone to the uh, hayabusa which is the uh, falcon hayabusa uh it's another one of the stones in the gaukin series and um i find it to be a perfect setup for this so what I did was I went 1.5k Shapton, then I went to the Falcon, and then I, I came to this. And um, I honestly, I have to tell you, like in each instance, um, you know, it's really hard to like sort of, you know, r remember what a polish was. But <clears throat> the polish from that progression reflected more detail and crisper outlines than anything else. Okay. Um, the shaves, you know, kind of pretty much free of distraction. It, it's not, that edge is not what I want, okay? I, I want the next level, always, you know, but it, it, the, the, the resulting sharpness off this stone is absolutely amazing to me, that like an eight, a stone sold as an 8K can, uh, you know, perform that well. Uh, the feedback is very smooth. There's enough of a underlying granularity that diminishes as you progress that you can read it. Um, it's a little quiet and a little subtle, all right? Um, so someone just starting out might have a difficult time picking up on that. Um, you know, sometimes people say, well, I don't think this is for beginners. I, I, I don't know what's for beginners and what's for old timers. Um, but I think somebody who doesn't have uh, a lot of experience would probably have some difficulties at first reading the feedback from this stone when you compare it to one of the options that preceded this. That's all, all right? Just kind of trying to make it clear, that's all. Uh, assets on this stone, fast, okay? It's fast like Snow White, maybe faster. Uh, decent feedback, but, you know, not outstanding, but it is decent, you know? Um, it's just very subtle, all right? It's stupid fine, and it's like crazy consistent, you know? Uh, it would be I think it would be hard for 90 watt to outdo this stone.
anything AK. I don't I don't know what they would do. You know, it would probably he would have to hone the razor for me. Liabilities, it's expensive. Okay. Another liability is it feels a little fake because it has that like resiny type of thing going on. Um, it's uncommon. You're not going to find a lot of people who can talk with you about this if you run into a situation. And a liability. Uh, to achieve max, I kind of feel like you absolutely need to set it up with the 4K Falcon. So that's like an added expense. So if you wanted to put this into your system and you wanted this to reach max, and max means you have to use the Falcon, you have to buy another stone. That's a bit of a distraction because now you're running into some money. Um, it's an AK that I routinely sells for over a hundred bucks. You don't need to spend that kind of money on a stone like this. I, I happen to enjoy having uh, different stones and stuff, so I don't look at like I don't look at it like I'm investing this so I can hone. I can hone without this. I bought this as extra. You know, it's it's fun for me. Um, it's a splash and go stone. Hones fast. You know, uh, like I said, the feedback is very subtle. It's very quiet. <laughs> it really, it, if you've ever honed on a 912K, one that, that has a polished top on it, this is kind of like that, and it actually might be even softer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's good stuff. Anyway, so that's the Naniwa Fuji. And uh, it's my uh, top performing AK. To be honest, it's not the one I'm going to grab most of the time because I, I love the Snow White more. And even though the Snow White I love more, I'm still not going to grab the Snow White all that often because I'm most likely going to grab the Shapton Pro. And this is how I'm going to close the video. You know, it, it's an AK stone, it's an AK stone, it's an AK stone. So. If you're planning on finishing on an AK stone, then you have one and you use it and you see where you're at. Maybe you want something finer. So there are other options out there. But for me and a lot of people, AK is like a jump point to finish. This, this would be the end of mid-range. Pre-finish if you wanted to use that silly term. Um, so it doesn't matter how great the stone is at, at that point. You know, everything becomes... Um, subjective and you know concerns about feedback and size and, and all these other things that factor in um, they're not necessarily having a direct impact on your ability to shave all right um, just don't want people thinking like you have to have like the best 8k to shave because you don't okay uh, you need to have a stone system that works for you that you enjoy using um, if you don't enjoy using your hones, start looking for other hones because honing is supposed to be about having fun, all right? Um, it's like the King system or the Naniwa traditional stones. I, I, I dislike them. Uh, I wouldn't want to use them all the time. I, I hone every day. I, I want my stones to like, I want to come home and want to put this stone on the bench and enjoy it. And I can't enjoy dry, brick-like, soaking, slow medium performers i can't that's for me okay i i need something else i i prefer to have stones like this hanging around even though i usually use the pros which are in between the stones i don't like and the stone i admire the most all right so anyway um gonna wrap this up now thanks for watching this is an incredibly long video if you watch the whole thing kudos to you man remember you know this is uh i'm just putting some information out here but this whole thing, this honing, this is all about like, you know, having a hobby, having fun, talking with other guys and, you know, even gals because, uh, you know, we don't own the market on honing. There's, there's a number of women out there sharpening razors too. And, um, you know, it's about enjoying this thing with wet shaving and straight razors and, and sharpening. It's about enjoyment, right? Um, avoid the people who are toxic, avoid the people who are drama ridden, avoid the people who are like constantly, you know, picking on people and, and talking bad about them. They're out there, you know who I'm talking about, avoid them like the plague. All right, stick with the good people and um, make sure you always have fun. All right, take care. Talk to you soon.